You can title this page of your notes Sections and Quadrants. This page is especially interesting for those of you that want to go into ultrasound or any kind of imaging. So when an MRI is done or you're looking at maybe a slice of something under the microscope, if it's divided into a left and right side, like this happy camper right here, we call it a sagittal section. I can always remember that because sagittal starts with an S and it divides it into a right and left side. But I can never remember how to spell sagittal. I'm always forever trying to put two G's in there, which you're not supposed to do. So that's a sagittal section. So I've divided the entire body that way. And an MRI can do that, but most likely, as you know, um, CAT scans and MRIs are looking at individual organs. And so a sagittal section of the brain would divide it into a left and a right side. There's a natural division in your brain that way, the right and the left uh, cerebral hemispheres. And then if you were to divide the heart into a right and left side, either for dissection or imaging, you would end up with a right and a left side. So the right atrium and the right ventricle would be on one side and the left atrium and the left ventricle on the other side. Okay, now you, let's use blue for another way that imaging can look at organs. This is a transverse section. And that, can you tell, divides it into what would you say? A top and a bottom. And it's perfect again because it starts with a T. So you can remember a transverse section divides something into a top and a bottom. If you were to look at the brain and the heart again like we did here, you can see that dividing the brain in a transverse section you'd be looking at the cerebral hemispheres would be on the top and then the lower brain areas below it. If you were to do that to the heart a transverse section would divide it into the top which would be the right and left atrium and then the right and left ventricles on the bottom. So it just depends on what the purpose is of the imaging, what people might want to look at. Sometimes transverse sections are also called cross sections. And if you're looking at a histology slide, sometimes they just write it like this. Cross section. Okay, now let's use our pink highlighter to look at one other way that is popular in looking at the planes of the human body. This would be a frontal section. Sometimes it's called a coronal if they're just looking at the head. Frontal or coronal section. And do you see the F? Divides it into a front and a back. So they're all pretty easy to remember based on this, the letters. So in the brain, let's say they were looking for a brain tumor, they could do a series of coronal sections from the front toward the back of the brain. And in a heart, what I've done in my drawing or tried to do, it, you're actually looking at it from the side. So if you were to do a coronal or a frontal dissection of the heart, you would end up with half of the atria up here and half of them back here and then half of the ventricles up here and half back here, a front and the back to the heart. Okay, now let's look at some cavities and quadrants that sometimes you hear the body divided up into. Just keep that pink highlighter and you can outline this diagram. This represents the brain and the spinal cord. And so everything in pink there is referred to as the dorsal cavity. 
You might remember on our previous page of our notes, sometimes dorsal is used interchangeably with posterior, and that's fine too. So the posterior body cavity contains the brain and the spinal cord. And then it's kind of separated from the rest of the organs by the spine. So then the ventral or cavity, anterior cavity, that's what this represents. I'm using a green highlighter for this. So the ventral or anterior cavity and it has a clear demarcation that separates it into a top and a bottom that separation is accomplished by the diaphragm so we call the upper part the thoracic cavity you can guess what's in there right the heart and the lungs and then below that is the abdominal cavity, sometimes called the abdominopelvic, because you have organs like your bladder and the uterus, if you're a female, that actually sit down in um, kind of protected by the bones of the pelvis. So the abdominopelvic cavity contains all the rest of the visceral organs. Visceral just means your internal organs. Okay, now let's go over here and look at... Um, the quadrants. Mostly I just want to highlight in yellow the four different quadrants. It seems like in clinical settings they just talk about these four quadrants and not so much the nine regions that you'll find if you're looking at an old anatomy book or a new anatomy book. So this would be up here the left upper quadrant. So if a patient came in with trauma and was having a lot of pain there, they might be concerned maybe about uh, the spleen. And then look over here. This would be the, what do you think? Right upper quadrant. So if a patient came in and um, was having a lot of right upper quadrant pain, they might do an ultrasound or something to look for uh, gallstones or possibly, um, you know, ulcers either in the lower stomach or uh, duodenal ulcers, which would be somewhere in this region in the first part of the small intestine. The liver is also in this region or uh, this quadrant, sorry. So then this would be the right lower quadrant and then the left lower quadrant. If a patient um, has appendicitis, classically they'll come in with pain in the uh, right lower quadrant. If they have diverticulosis, which are like outpouchings in their colon, then they are more likely to have left lower quadrant pain. And I think I've heard that uh, constipation can also cause some left lower quadrant uh, pain. Then there are uh, nine regions. That's what these original divisions are for. I really just want to tell you two because I think that's mostly all you'll hear in a clinical setting. This one right here, that is the epigastric because it's upon the stomach. And, of course, um, stomach pain could be felt there. So epigastric means, and this is a region, upon the stomach. And then where your belly button is, is the umbilical region. I'm going to use pink again here. Okay, that's it for this one.